eventually you wind up taking a bad step and you let them step forward. Everybody said because we're called to raise up the next seed. We're called to raise up, raise up the next seed. Praise the Lord. Man, if you have your word, why don't you turn with me right here to the book of Acts. Praise the Lord. The book of Acts. Hallelujah. The Lord is so faithful and so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Book of Acts, and we're going to chapter number three. The book of Acts. Oh, glory to your name, Lord God. Thank you so much, Lord God. Acts, the third chapter. Just to give you a little backdrop of what's happening right here, Peter. John, they were witnesses. Yes, sir. They had their times of falling. They had their times of falling away. Even within the gospel, within the kingdom, they made mistakes. Jesus literally told Peter, and Satan desires to have you, that he might sift you like wheat. He said, but I pray for you that during your hour of trial, your faith won't fail. This is the same Peter that started loving what the Lord was saying to him. In his mind, he could not even imagine the Lord Yeshua himself being taken from him to the degree that when the guard showed up to arrest him, Peter didn't even realize it. I mean, just out of a second nature, he just quickly poured out a, a sword and chopped the, the guard's ear off. How do you handle that when you feel like you're doing the right thing? And the Lord rebuked you when you got set a stage. He said, Peter, <laughs> what do you do when you realize this is one thing you have to suffer through? That's helping you suffer. Peter is like. You got to think about it. Peter heard when the Lord said. One of y'all at this table right now. Is going to betray me. One of y'all. He said remember. I had picked every one of you. And yet one of you. Is a devil. Won't you y'all imagine. What that made them feel like they looking like who me? Then all of a sudden, man, Jesus got to put the ear back on the guard and look at Peter. Peter telling him, "You're not gonna have to do this." And then Jesus looks at Peter and says, "Satan, get behind me!" How did? I mean, yo, this in our imagination. How would you? You think that would have been a church hurt? Man, I'm trying to, man, man, y'all saw what Jesus did, man. And I'm, ain't nobody was down with him like I've been down. You see how he embarrassed me? He handled me bad. And I'm done. Oh, man, peace out. I wonder if Matthew was like, hold up, man. You remember that word? A righteous man falls down seven times. I know I gotta die, but I gotta help you suffer through this. I gotta help you suffer through this. Peter was the one that said, I don't even know him. Three times. And what now? Peter probably got his feelings hurt so bad. Peter looked like he was out. Done. I'm 
pretty sure, man, Peter had to think about what Jeremiah said when Jeremiah said he was done too. What happens, man, if you fall away so hard and you deny that you even know the ones that helped pick you up? I'm talking about a comeback, man. Hallelujah. Sometimes, y'all, you gotta help pick up somebody that you know your words just knock them down. Your words. You, you wasn't trying to knock them down, but you understood you had to humble them. You're trying to grow too fast. You don't really understand what you're doing right now. Everybody say, I still got to raise up the next one. I still got to raise up the next one. I have to. I don't care how much it hurt. You know, we start getting careful. You know how we say, man, I'm on thin eggs. I'm man, when you start getting serious about the Lord, you start realizing that same word to have to change you. You still start feeling like, man, I got to walk on thin, like I'm walking on thin eggs, thin ice, man. I don't want to hurt them. But guess what? If you was able to endure it, what make you think they won't? Either they can or they can't. Either they will or they won't. Not that they can't. Some of them just won't. Guess what? You still got to obey. You still got to plant. You still got to water. Sometimes the Lord will step up and say, man, if, if that person make it, what is that to you? You better run your race. You better make sure you keep your eyes on the prize. Don't turn to the left. Don't turn to the right. Straight, stay straight forward. Everybody just take a moment right now, y'all, because this gospel, it ain't no punk, y'all. I'm serious. Everybody take a moment and just ask the Lord to help you in your walk because he knows when we fall. The Lord actually told Peter, man, you talking like you so gangster, like you bowed it. But man, before the rooster crows, you gonna deny that you even know me. You don't really rise until you really fail. Oh my God. So y'all believe it or not, Peter realizes he's the next one up. Peter's the one that, man, Jesus gone. What do we do? Man, I'm hungry. Going to the temple 
Where y'all going? Y'all still going to church? Man, I remember how Jesus did it. Yes, sir. And I'm going to listen to see if them priests speaking the right word. I'm going to see if they if they trying to twist something. You got to remember that was the same Peter when Jesus flipped the tables over. Peter said, I must be the next up. I need to make sure ain't nothing going on. And my, his word might have left some people, but his word is still in me. Hallelujah. And I'm burning. Man. I don't know what's going to happen. Right about now, I don't even care. Man, John, let's go. Can you imagine them boys walking through the city like big old gangsters? It's just two of them. And look what happens. The scripture says they go into the temple and a man is at the temple begging for alms and he's lame. Can't even walk. And the scripture says that he puts his eyes on him. Hallelujah. And says, can you give us something? And the scripture says that Peter comes out and says, silver and gold I don't have. But such as I have, that I give unto you. Well, Peter was on fire. He didn't just say, rise up. If you read the scripture, he says, when Peter said, rise up, he took the man by the hand and ain't even give him an option whether or not he was going to doubt. Right, I said, rise up. Hallelujah. And the scripture says as he was being pulled up, his legs got strong. And guess what? Them boys still went into the temple. Acts chapter 3. Oh, watch this. After they realize what's happening, the scripture says, Acts 3 and 19, but Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it be right, hallelujah, in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than God, you be the judge. For we cannot speak but the things that we have seen and heard. What are you hearing and what are you seeing right now? That's why you got to stick around long enough. You got to stick around long enough so you can see enough. See, it's one thing to say you saw, but have you seen enough? Hallelujah. See, it's one thing to say I heard the word. So many of us, brother, can we talk about we talk about that? So many people can say they heard the word, they're familiar with it, but have you heard enough? Where you really take a stand. Peter says, we can't but speak the things that we have seen and the stuff that we heard. So when they had further threatened Peter and John, they let them go finding nothing, how they might punish them because of the people and all men glorified God for that which was done. Verse number 22, for the man was above 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing was shown. I'm gonna ask y'all again, have you seen enough? Have you heard, I know you saw some things, I know you heard some things, but have you seen and heard enough? Verse 24, and when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God. Man, that almost sound like they was on Mount Carmel with Elijah. The Lord, he is God. Yo, every, yo, listen to this. Every single time we get confronted with a challenge, there's bystanders that's literally in a position trying to make up their mind, Jaden, whose side they're going to be on. So now, after the man that was lame was healed, they said, the Lord, thou art God, which has made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. Verse 25, here we go, y'all. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? 
oh my God, the kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against this. I'm sorry, I'm reading chapter four. Why y'all ain't telling me nothing? Y'all just got y'all gotta be reading that read chapter four for more than me. Yo, man, so so check this out. Listen, y'all. <laughs> Peter is dealing with this, and look what Peter says right here, y'all. Let me back up just a little bit. 23, and it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be, what y'all Bible say? Destroyed from among the people. Shall be destroyed from among the people, okay? Now watch this, verse number 24. Yeah, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold about days like this. Everybody say these days. These days. These days right here. These days. And I'm sitting down with breakfast, having breakfast with Minister Mwamba and Minister T. And all of a sudden, they start telling me about how they went into a, a Hispanic store. And they walking in there, two men, and all of a sudden, Terrence is speaking about the Lord in Spanish and his the best he can. Jesus Cristo. <laughs> he's he's literally speaking the word of the Lord as best he can. Y'all, Minister Warren, come here one second. Just come in and tell y'all, cause because I need y'all to really understand that. From the time of Samuel, it was prophesied about, everybody say, these days. These days. See, have you seen enough? Have you heard enough? Just take about two minutes, man, and tell us what happened. So you were so powerful. You was my brother John, Minister T, and I. We went to this corner store. We went to this Hispanic store that's next to our house called Celebros. And we were just going to just buy some food. And when Minister T got in there, he was first on the phone and he was loud. And then after that, he began to scream out, Jesus Cristo. And because he saw everybody was mainly Hispanic, he began to scream out, Jesus Cristo. And like, the people were looking at him, he was laughing, and Jesus was laughing too. And he just, he began to speak Spanish, began to speak Spanish about preaching the gospel. And I would go on my phone, I would type in English, translate in Spanish, and Jesus would cry out to the people, repent and be baptized in Spanish. And there was this lady, Hispanic lady that was on the line and she began to speak a gospel to Terrence and be like, this is how you say Jesus is Lord in Spanish and Terrence will repeat in front of everybody pointing them like this. <laughs> and after we finished paying for our food, Minister T was about to leave, we like, no, we've got to pray for that woman. We waited, that woman came, she had another woman next to her. We asked her, let us pray, she said yes, but she had somebody next to her, she was like, come and pray. The other girl said no, but she still came. And we began to pray, we began to pray, we began to pray. But the testimony was that there was a young girl, no older than 15. She was with her father. And when Minister C was saying that, she began to ask, where are God's from? What church I go to? Do you believe in God? was a yes, man. And as we better leave, I was like, no. I think we should pray for them too. And we waited and she came out with her dad. And we held her outside. Her dad was like, let us go. Just say hallelujah. Let us go. We got to go. She was like, she began to say, Father, no. She was telling her dad, stop. This is a girl that's not even older than 15. Hallelujah. And we began to pray. The father was saying, let us go. The daughter was saying, no, we're not leaving. Until we finished praying. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And only God knows what happened after that. But we believe that the Lord really touched them. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yo, yo, we got to talk about some stuff tonight. Hallelujah. Verse 24 said, Yeah, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Look what Peter said in verse number 25. Are the children of the prophets Hallelujah. and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying, Abraham, hallelujah, and in your seed shall.
shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Verse 26, unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Man, Peter is preaching right now. And it's almost as if there is a sifting take, taking place. Like separating the sheep from the goat. He's literally, they got some people that look like they might be about the gospel and they got some that's looking like they might not care. They're gathering together because of the commotion. But remember, Jesus told a bunch of people that was following him, you follow me because your belly was filled. You follow me because you're looking for miracles, but your heart is not in it. Peter is literally telling these people, he's, I'm, I'm just imagining in my imagination, how did he look at them when he said, just in case you forgot, y'all are, y'all are the offspring of men who was persecuted, people who died, people who spoke the word of God without fear. Let me drop a bombshell. If you don't even know who your parents are, if you carry this word on the inside of you, that means that there is a promise that was made to somebody before you that had to be fulfilled in you. That could skip over so many others. And yet Peter is saying, Like in other words, I ain't got time to worry about how much you acting like you don't want this gospel. It's got to get to the point where you say, have I seen enough? Have I heard enough? Yeah. And now I realize there's still going to be a remnant. I don't care how bad it look. I don't care how far away they run. I don't care how far they went outside of the boundary. Many of them are still the children of the ones who are called. And if you're the children of the called, oh my God, that means there's a seed in you. Hallelujah. There's a seed. Everybody said there's a seed in me. There's a seed in me. We gather together because there's a seed on the inside of us. So guess what? I need y'all to understand that I know a lot of times we say, you know, how much we want to be just like Jesus and I want y'all to know I'm not trying to be him I'm not trying to be Jesus I'm trying to be the next one Hallelujah. I'm trying to be Dale Hamilton Hallelujah. because evidently there was a seed and there was a word spoken that fell on me and it's not about trying to be somebody I'm not. It's all about being who I'm called to be. Hallelujah. Who are you called to be? I too am the righteousness of God. I'm not trying to be him. I'm in him. Hallelujah. And he lives in me. Hallelujah. Yo, we got to be awakened to such a degree. That somebody else can find themselves walking alongside of you because something just was provoked on the inside of them. Something was awakened on the inside. And you find yourself, you thought you just was giving somebody that, but in actuality, you really reaching down and you saying, come on up here. Hallelujah. Come on to a higher place. Hallelujah. Every single time you read your word, you're getting deeper. Every time you pray, Jesus. Jesus, you got to go deep enough Hallelujah. to make sure you saw enough and you heard enough oh, that the Lord would change and transform your life. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is that's trying to get you. Sometimes when you dig it, you hit roots, you hit rocks, yeah. and you can't be easily discouraged. Sometimes you got to dig out a little wider than what you wanted to. Because you got to get something out of the way. 
something is trying to stop you from going deeper. I don't care if it's a, if it's an excuse, if it's laziness, something is trying to stop you from going deeper. But don't you be easily discouraged. Yeah, yeah. Go deeper. Yeah. Help me, help me. Yeah. Go deeper. Yes, yes, help me. Sometimes when you're using a shovel, you might need to go get an axe. Mm. Might need to get a chainsaw. Don't let nothing stop you from going deeper. If you're still being tormented in some area, if something is still hurting you, go deeper. Go deeper. Because nothing is supposed to stop the peace of God that we have. We shouldn't be walking around our friends dapping them up and on the inside wondering, I wonder if they know that I just fell. Go deeper. You are the children of the prophets. What would you do if I told you that some people are being saved or will be saved because of you? I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about just because of the written word where they read the word on their own, but they may not even get to the word until they get to you. Yes, sir. Somebody's going to be changed because of you. Let me show y'all something real quick, y'all. Go to the book of John real quick. John 15. John 15. Hallelujah. Everybody say, raise up the next seed. Raise up the next seed. Hallelujah. Who's next? Who's next? That's what I'm talking about, John. I'm next. I'm next. Who's next? I'm next. Come on, y'all. Who's next? I'm next. I'm next. Hallelujah. John 15, look at the word, verse number 20. Praise the Lord. Sister Lisa, can you get verse number 20? John 15, 20. Read this. Yes, sir. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also be here. Oh, wait a minute. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Sister Anthony, can you get that microphone and read that same one? Verse number 20. Read it loud for me, daughter. Verse. John 15. Yeah. Verse 20. Yeah. Remember what I told you. A servant is not greater than his master. If people did wrong to me, they will do wrong to you too. And if they obey my teaching, they will obey yours too. So wait a minute. He's telling us that once we get to the point where we receive his word, he said the same way we start obeying what he says, he says there's going to be people in your life that's going to obey and do what you say. Are y'all seeing this? Hallelujah. Yes, now, what took place to get them to Jesus' word? He says, have you remembered the word that I spoke? Have you heard enough yet? Have you heard enough yet? Look what he says. The servant is not greater than his Lord. Say, don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged, man. We got a lot of stuff that's gonna try to discourage us. I, I know it's I know it's right there, John. Don't be discouraged, man. You're like pastor, but you know how hard it is. I know, man, but don't be discouraged. I'm telling you, Claude, I know it's gonna keep coming like waves. But you know what? Don't be discouraged. Hallelujah. Because it's not that you're so wrong, it's because you identify as being the next one up. Hallelujah. And not a warfare has come to prove you. So this ain't no secret, y'all. It's not a secret. The tests are coming. Yes, sir. Just like waves. But be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. And in the power of His might. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you might be able to stand against the wiles, the tactics, the trials of the devil. Having done all to stand, all stand therefore. Yes, sir. He says, if they, if they hating on me, 
They're going to hate on you too. But look what he says. But if they kept my words, they're going to keep yours, Jaden. So wait a minute. This sounds like you're preparing to leave. But even though you're preparing to leave, it's like saying you're leaving, but you're not going to give up what you gain. And you expect to gain even more. Well, Lord, if you're leaving, who's going to do all this? You are. You are. That's why Isaiah said, take the yoke off your neck. Dust yourself off. Get up. Now sit on and receive instruction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If they kept my words, they're going to keep yours also. Let's turn again right now. Look at, go to Luke number six. Everybody, yo, who's the next one up, yo? I am. Hallelujah. Luke 6. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Luke 6, verse number 40. Minister Mawama, read that verse number 40. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Luke 6, verse 40. Yes, sir. The disciple is not above his master. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Oh, wait, did, did y'all hear that? Hallelujah. Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Sam, can you read that same one for me, man? Hallelujah. Verse 40. Students are not greater than the teacher, but the student will surely train will become like the teacher. Wait a minute. So, so watch, watch what this easy English translation says. Watch this, Brother Bosco. A student is less a student is less important than his teacher is like in other words the teacher at this particular point has more emphasis than the student watch this but when the student has learned everything he will be just like his teacher see while you're learning the teacher is greater when you learn everything you were supposed to be taught, now you like him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Please understand what I'm saying. It's not that difficult. Amen. Have you seen enough? Have you heard enough? When you finish the third grade, you don't stay there after you learned everything. Got it? Yes, so wait a minute. First boy says the disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be perfect as his master is perfect. Who's teaching you? If the Holy Spirit is teaching us and leading us, and we growing. Everybody say I'm growing. I'm growing. Watch this. Drop down to verse number 43. This is why you can't be connected to just anybody. Verse 43. Read that, Minister T. Verse 43. Luke 6 and verse 43. Yes, sir. For a good tree bring it not forth corrupt fruit. Mm. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. So wait a minute. He's saying that, you know, there might be some people that might be a little confused. How do I know what I got? How do I know what I'm seeing? How do I know where somebody possibly came from? Nobody says a good tree cannot bring forth corrupt fruit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like every seed is going to produce after its own kind. Yes, sir. Right. So that means if somebody has missed the mark, if somebody's at a place where they're so far off, the 
the scripture says that it's based on the tree. And remember, y'all, we are, everybody said we all are students. We are all students. students. But guess what? They got students that become tutors. They got some of us. I'm a school teacher, y'all. There's something called peer teaching where a student who has mastered a principle, though he's not the teacher, he can teach as a teacher teaches. And even bring about revelation that maybe the teacher didn't even have. Are y'all getting this? Hallelujah. A good tree bring it not forth corrupt fruit. Neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Verse number 44. Brother John, I want you to read that verse number 44, man. Verse 44, Luke 6, 44. Hallelujah. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For man do not gather, what is that, fruit from figs, figs from, from thorn. Nor do they gather grapes from a ramble. ramble bush. Yeah. He said every tree is known by its fruit. He says if you're looking for figs, figs don't grow. On a thorn bush. You looking for figs? Man, you you at the wrong tree. Boy, this is so powerful. It's a trip that people can look at a person, ignore the fruit that they bear, and say, I'm looking for figs. What fruit do you see? He says, if you're looking for figs, Figs are found on a fig tree. <laughs> he said, if you're looking for grapes, it's not found on a bramble bush, something that rolls in the dust. It's not. If you're looking for, for the right type of fruit, you got to find the right source. Uh oh, here we go, y'all. Verse number 45. Sister Antony, can you read verse 45? Watch this, y'all. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> good people bring good things out of the good they stored in their hearts. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up right there. Hold up. 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 So, 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 wait a minute. Hallelujah. We dealing with the gatekeeper. Yes, sir. And the storage tank. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. The storage tank is the heart. The gatekeeper opens the gate to allow things to come into the heart. Whatever you store is based on what the gatekeeper is like. Yeah, come on in. Yes, sir. Come on in. Yeah. Come on in. All of a sudden, something trying to come in. The gatekeeper is like, nah, close it. Nah, nah. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't allow that. The scripture says a good man can produce treasure based on what he's allowed to take precedence in his heart. Yes, sir. Whoa. If you're feasting on evil, it'll be kind of, it kind of, I, I want to say asinine, is that a bad word? It's kind of crazy to think that you're going to find good. Is this making sense? Oh, yes, yes, sir. Go ahead, sister Anthony. Go ahead. Read it again from the beginning. Good people bring good things out of the good they stored in their hearts. Mm. But evil people bring evil things out of the evil they stored in their hearts. People speak the things that are in their hearts. So wait a minute. So if... Our hearts are really messed up. Y'all don't hang up. Don't don't shut it down. You just got work to do. You got work to do. You need to go have a talk with your gatekeeper. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Y'all know how we say. There's a new sheriff.
sheriff in town. Yes. Yeah. And we got to change up some things. And when you find yourself having certain things that you don't want to necessarily change, it's not, it don't mean that you evil. It just means that you just in that flesh. But if you could only connect with the right people and have the appetite to be fed by the right source, what you once produced is going to begin to change. For him to say a good man, evidently, he has some attributes to make you say, that's good according to the laws of heaven according to the government of God oh yeah that's good see that's what I want I, regardless of what Negroes say out here on earth regardless of what people say who lost how about we have approval from heaven yes sir he says a good man out of the good treasure of his heart out of the stuff that he let in he's able to bring out based on what's in Bring it out. But oh, oh, he said, but an evil man, out of the evil treasures of his heart, brings forth that which is evil. Y'all, y'all tell me what's what y'all think would be a good definition of evil? What's evil? Abomination. What's an abomination? What is that? Let's talk like, like people don't know. What is evil? Hatred. Hatred. Evil. Right. Strife. Strife. Yes. Huh? Jealousy. Jealousy. Anything else? Manipulation. Manipulation. Wrath. Deception. Rage. Murder. Lust. Adultery. Fornication. Wow. All these things. Robbery. All wow. these things that are evil. The scripture says if that's what you produce, and it's because that's what you're getting out of your heart. Mm. Wow, 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 wow. wow. That's what's coming out. You sticking your hand in it, trying to grab something. You know, you know how like they, they got like we like I'm a, I'm a professional, and you know sometimes they have the you know, well you, you have to put your your number your name on a number or something, and they put all these names in a like a hat or something, and they say, "Come see if you're gonna win the prize. See if you tip it. Somebody put it, man. Uh, Dale Hamilton. <laughs> oh, that's me. I got that. Oh, they got." The Lord says, if you stick your hand in your heart, what you gonna pull out? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. We, what you been sticking in there? You can't put all this lust, man, and lies and deception and hatred and, and anger and, and, and steal and all this stuff, but then have a little kindness. Well, I'm not saying you won't find kindness. This is slim chance that you will get it if it's got all this other stuff in there too. Because y'all know they got a lot of people that have a lot of evil tendencies and yet they still have good in them. We've been saying that all our lives. But when the storm comes, you know, when you got time and you hoping you get the right thing, you like, I ain't just grabbing the first one. I'm trying to see what's the last thing I did. I'm, I'm trying to, let me see if I can make my way to the bottom. Grab something good. Oh, 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 oh. I wasn't trying to grab that. I know I did it, but I wasn't trying to grab that. Hallelujah. But if all of a sudden you start putting, give me some more temperance. Give me more temperance. Give me some discipline. Give me more discipline. Give me more prayer. Give me, give me more prayer. Give me more gentleness. Give me more joy. Give me more joy. Hallelujah. Give me more forgiveness. Give me more forgiveness. Guess what? All of a sudden, if you got to reach in that heart, don't matter how deep you go now. Don't matter how much they stir it up. What's coming out? Temperance. Hallelujah. out on the date. Ooh, we yeah, got a hot date. Got a hot date. What's going to come out of your heart? Discipline. Hallelujah. <laughs> See what I'm talking about. Yes, 
somebody that got on your nerves, somebody that cut you off while you're driving, how you gonna respond? Forgiveness. Forgive. I just forgive. Guess what, y'all? There is no law to how much of the fruit of the spirit you can have. That's right, right. Yes, sir. Yes. Or say after you forgot, forgave that person at the red light. Yeah, boy. Somebody got to the job and somebody, somebody just handled you so bad. Forgiveness again. Yeah. Yeah. Get home. Somebody act like they disrespect you. Forgiveness again. Hallelujah. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness. Because that's what's in your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody acting bad with you. Hallelujah. Bless them. Oh, 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 glory be to your name. Somebody that stole something from you. Oh, be magnified. Bless them too. Hallelujah. Bless them. Yes, Lord. Yes. Because whatever's in your heart oh, glory be is what's coming out. Hallelujah. Because every evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart will bring forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart comes straight out of your mouth. Straight out of your mouth. Father, I pray right now, Lord God. Oh God. God, this is hurting, Lord God. Cleanse our hearts, Lord God. Oh, the cleanse us, Lord. We shouldn't be going 50-50. Bless somebody one day and cut somebody out the next day. I need more of you, Lord God. Have you seen enough? Have you heard enough? If you saw enough and if you heard enough, guess what's going to happen with that gatekeeper, man? That gatekeeper been working out. That gatekeeper ain't easily intimidated. That gatekeeper is like, now nah, I'm full of discipline. I'm full of temperance because now your mind has been got it and overflowed from your heart, and now your mind has been renewed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look what he says in verse number 46. Hallelujah. Oh my God. Look what he says in 46. By the way, I'm telling you about a good person when they get out of their heart. I'm telling you about an evil person when they get out of their heart. And the next thing Jesus says, by the way, who you call Lord? He said, why are you calling me Lord? Your real Lord is what's in your heart. Who you following? Yeah. Boy, this is, this is, he said, why are you calling me Lord? How, how you say I'm Lord, but you're not doing what I'm telling you to do? And that's when he goes down to whoever comes to me. Uh, everybody said, Lord, I'm coming to you right now. I'm coming to you right now. Whoever comes to me and hears. Y'all remember I said, have you heard enough? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings enough. And does them, I will show you. Hallelujah. Not easily discouraged. The first route you get to. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. You don't stop easy. You keep going. Some of y'all are fighting through stuff that your families dealt with. Some of y'all fight through old traditions. Old generational curses. <clears throat> Good enough. Get to the point to where the, the top of the post hole digger is this high. But by the time you get where you're supposed to be, the post hole digger is down here because the rest of it is in the ground. Yeah. Get past the stuff that's trying to stop you. Hallelujah. Get past it. Jesus. You know why? You the children of these prophets. Hallelujah. You the offspring. You might not be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something I wrote down. Hallelujah. You might not be the prophet. Even though you the child of the prophet, you might not be the prophet. But you a teacher. Man, somebody. No matter how 
with somebody, pull them up here. They can't stand up here unless they've been taught how to stand. You might not be an evangelist, but for whatever reason, you know how to put things in order like a judge. You the children of the prophets. Everybody not coming out like a cookie cutter. What's coming out is what's needed for this season and at this time. That's why the Lord says, Shall the clay ask the potter, Why did you make me like this? The Lord says, I have need of you. He needs us. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Let me hurry up and close, y'all. Let's go to this. Hey, man, that time flew by. Let's go to uh, John 13 real quick. John 13 John 13 verse number 16 Sister Anthony can you get that mic and pass it to my brother Brother Kenneth Praise the Lord John 13 and verse number 16 Brother Kenneth Man of God read that with that authority man John 13 and verse number 16 Hallelujah Verse 16. Yes, sir. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Do y'all see this? He said, A servant is not greater than his Lord. He said, But the one that was sent out is not greater than the one that sent them. See, there comes a time that after you've seen enough and heard enough, you're not fighting for no position. Yes, sir. You're not thrusting one another. You know how to stay in your lane. Yeah. Because if you stop doing what you call to do, who's going to do that? Yeah. So now I got the mindset. I understand. It ain't about who's greater. It's not about who's more important. We all important. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's go to this last one. Y'all gonna try to squeeze these last ones in. Luke two, Luke two. Luke two. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Luke two. Verse number 34, I'm going to read these because I got two. Luke 2 and 34. And Simeon blessed them, Mary and Joseph, and said unto Mary, Jesus' mother, Behold, this child is set, he's chosen for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel and for a sign which shall be spoken against, meaning that people are going to be challenging what he says, but he's saying, I want you to know Jesus is up next. And he is, he's not a one. He is the one. So, so I want you to understand, we, it's possible for us to be everything we call to be because he went first. And he did it. Done. Praise the Lord. Oh, watch this. Last one, John 20 and 21. Hallelujah. John 20 and 21. Peace be unto you as my father has sent me even so who's next I am as the father has sent me I'm sending you who's next I am on whatever level you want whatever pace of your spiritual growth and development 
up in your own. You're next, Lord. You're next. Look what he says. I'm not sending you no different than how the Father sent me. As he sent me, I'm sending you. If nobody ever told you before, Lord, I'm telling you now. You next. I'm telling you. Act like you next. Carry yourself like you next. Can it? You're next, bro. Have the mindset to know you. why is this warfare so tough? Because you're next. You gotta be proven. Jaden, how we wind up meeting at, at Starbucks and y'all outside talking. You know why? You're next. There's some things that God says, who's up? Jaden is up. Hallelujah. Send a word to her that's going to penetrate. Send a word that's going to break through. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And this is why he says in Acts, and this is where we close out. Y'all, we can stand to our feet. Acts 3, 25. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying unto Abraham in your seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed y'all where do we live? in the heaven where, where we living right now? where we live? Where we live at today? We live on the earth. We live on the earth. We live on the earth. We're right here. Stafford, Texas. The blessing was spoke to all the kindreds of the earth. We can. We family. Hallelujah. Verse 26, unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, he's done. Christ has been raised, done. Been sent already to get people to turn away from their iniquities. Believe it or not, y'all, I want you to know you have the authority to tell somebody Man, that's too much. That's too much. You also have the authority to say, that's not enough. I need y'all to understand, God has called us to judge righteously. The scripture says, if you forgive, boy, this is so heavy, y'all. We don't, I've never really heard this taught in the church. If you forgive somebody, God says, I forgive him too. But he also says, if you don't forgive him, I don't forgive him either. Can we deal with what the word says? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, indeed. That's the spirit. Yes, sir. So that means that if you feel like somebody that did something too much, y'all know this is tight. I know it's hard. But if you say, hold up. That's too much. Believe it or not, when the scripture says that if somebody don't want to hear you, and he said, dust your feet off, you know what that's like saying? God handled the who said the way you see fit. I'm done. Yeah. I've done my part. I prayed. I've done what I was supposed to. I'm done. Yeah. He said, well, get on to the next city then. See if you find one that will be worthy. Worthy of repentance. So, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God. Father, I ask that you just continue to help me, Lord God, because I know this is challenging, Lord God. Father, your word says that a good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, is able to bring forth good. Father, we simply gather together, Lord God, to begin to fill our storage tank right now, Lord God. Continue to condition our gatekeeper. 
to not get confused. Good today, good tomorrow, and then evil three days from now. Father, just help us right now, Lord God. Thank you for your long suffering and your patience for us. And I ask right now, Lord God, that you continue to allow us to build a team, to build an army, that we will hold each other accountable, that we will endure with each other when we get tired, and we will get tired at times. But if we speak the right word because of that seed, who's next? I am. I'm next. Hallelujah.